Welcome everyone to the Boiler Breakdown podcast. Tonight you just uh, fortunately just have me, Evan Webb, as your host as uh, Tanner and Andrew are had some prior engagements tonight and weren't able to make it, but uh, that's all right because it's not about me or even really about our podcast tonight as we've got a very special guest as we're getting ready to you know start a new season of the Boiler Breakdown podcast and a new season of you know Purdue Athletics. Uh, you know we have a new awesome new sponsor that we, we thought would be a cool idea to you know, have them hop on. Uh, do a quick little interview with them so you guys get a chance to know them if you're not familiar with them already. Um, and there's some pretty ties here as well. So I wanted to you know, introduce Alex, who's the owner of the shop uh, here in Indianapolis. And so, Alex, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome. So I kind of mentioned there in the intro, Alex, you are, in fact, a Purdue grad. Um, uh, yes, I am. Yeah. Um, December 05, uh, building construction management. Awesome. My degree. Um, and uh, took a little longer uh, than four years to graduate. I had a lot of fun at Purdue. So yeah. I was around. Uh, freshman year was 99. Okay. It's changed quite a bit, uh, the landscape yeah. of college physically and, and just, you know, everything, you know, at Purdue uh, in general has changed quite a bit. Uh, we were up there a couple of weeks ago just mm-hmm. to go get some triple X. And Absolutely. Amazing to see how much construction has gone on, uh, how, how the university has expanded, mm-hmm. uh, and just how it c- continues to grow. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tanner and I talked. Tanner's a uh, spring 2015. I was a December 2015. We both took a uh, half a victory lap and took four and a half years to, to graduate. And, and just we haven't been feel like we haven't been gone that long. And even now, when I go back to campus, it's it's crazy how much has changed just in the short you know time that I've that I've been gone. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, my freshman year, I don't remember instruction at all. Um, you know, they demoed the bars across some. Um, University Bookstore, mm-hmm. uh, T.A. Tom's, one of the original breakfast club spots. They demoed them to build Rawls Hall. Um, okay. And that, I think that was Beering's last year's president. Okay. Now Beering is uh, the road that goes up by the stadium. Yep. And then Martin Jiski came in, and he was he's pretty much a visionary in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, we're going to make Purdue this. Not, not that it wasn't a great university, but just – you know, take it to the next level in terms of research mm-hmm. and getting people to come in and getting public, or, you know, partnerships with corporate corporations. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what you see now over on the, oh, what's that, the west side of campus over where all the research uh, right. center is. That used yeah. to be those married student housing, those mm-hmm. two-story, um, I think they might have been World War II era. Okay. Uh, maybe they weren't that old, but, uh, you know, where... Um, Armstrong is Armstrong Hall. That was all like single story World War II era uh, barracks that they huh. used for like the arts classes and things like that. Uh, they were so old when they tore those down, they had to remove asbestos. Um, <laughs> so just to see how it's how it's changed, just the facilities are uh, right. It's nice to see, especially with athletics um, and academics. This it, it makes it a world class university. They continue to grow because you look at other colleges, mm-hmm. what they're doing, and you've got to attract. Um, you got to attract students who want to do research. You got to mm-hmm. attract professors who want to do research. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool, uh, and it's great to be an in-state university. Absolutely. I got four boys, and I'd <laughs> love them to go to an in-state college and have there that be Purdue because um, it's not cheap. It's a lot no, more expensive not. than it was in '99. Right, and the cool thing is that you know President Daniels has done a great job of holding tuition for about a decade, and hopefully that. That continues. I'm not sure how long they can hold that, but you know. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm a Mitch Daniels fan for more reasons than one. Uh, yeah. The tuition one's great. Like this, I mean, yeah, look at it as a student and, and with student loans and student loan debt being such a big problem. Mm-hmm. But then on top of that, he comes in, he says, "Well, we got to make the athletic department a, a part of the marketing department. We got to spend money, mm-hmm. uh, which they've done, which has been great." Yep. Uh, and then beer at Ross Aid. I mean, he. <laughs> That we were, I was talking with some uh, fraternity brothers the other night. We're like, man, you know, that Purdue was one of the first to have beer at a college uh, arena, which is right back in the day, you wouldn't think because Purdue was kind of a follower in that regard mm-hmm. uh, with athletics and things like that. But yeah, you know, Mitch is smart, he knows what he's doing. Uh, Absolutely. So, gr- uh, did you, I mean, did you grow up in Indiana? Uh, no, I grew up in Maryland. Okay. Uh, so, uh, around DC, DC area. Um, Came out here because we used to have a we had a neighbor we used to have a neighbor who was associate head of uh, civil engineering at Purdue, and at the time I was going to be an engineering. Mm-hmm. I was looking at colleges, 
And I actually, I grew up in a Notre Dame household, Notre Dame fans. And my dad said, well, you should look at Purdue. I'm like, well, you know, who's Purdue? I don't, you know, I'd never heard of them. He's like, well, Notre Dame plays them every year. And at the time, Notre Dame just would beat up on them every year. Um, so I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I know who they are. And I started doing my research, and I picked a few colleges to visit. It was actually, it's like spring break of 99, it's the year I graduated. We drove to uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, to check out West Virginia. Didn't like it. Um, it wasn't really a campus. It was kind of like two campuses spread out in the city. Went to Purdue. And I fell in love immediately. People joke about the brick buildings and it's all kind of flat and everything. I love the you're on a campus aspect of Purdue. That's what I wanted. And on a day where I think it was middle of the day and it was dark as hell because it was just so overcast and cold and nasty in March. I, I was like, Dad, this is where I want to be. Our next trip was supposed to be to Clemson. Um, and for some reason, I didn't. I said, no, nah, I don't even need to visit. This is for me. I probably would have gone to Clemson. Um, because of the weather and the Southern women, but, um, you know, I made, I made that decision then and there that time I was gung ho about being an engineer. And, you know, if you go to Purdue engineering is such a, such a large, um, large part of that university. And I could see the dedication there. It's like, well, you know, if I'm going to be an engineer, it's a place to be, it didn't work out at, you know, uh, school and, uh, Purdue told me to take a break and I did. And, um, uh, you know, I couldn't have been happier with my time there and I could have come home when I failed out of school and I was like no I you know I'm meant to be in Indiana I'm meant to be a Purdue grad I'm going to get back in this is what I'm going to do um, and that's one of the best decisions I've ever made. And you're definitely at Purdue for some awesome uh, yeah. athletic, athletic we events. Times. We had some good times a couple years yeah. of Drew Brees yeah uh, we beat Gonzaga in the Sweet 16 got tear gassed <laughs> um, we got to see kind of the fall of Bobby Knight. Yep. That was fun. Absolutely. Um, I just missed the women's championship. I think that was the year before I came. Okay. In basketball. But, yep. Yeah. Uh, those Drew Brees years, especially that Rose Bowl year, were they were fantastic. So much fun. Yes. Uh, uh, I was a little too young. I, I vaguely remember it. Um, I know Tanner, our, one of our our co-hosts, he he that was one of his first games that he oh, remembers yeah. vividly was. The Holy Toledo game. Um, so I, I said, I don't, I don't, unfortunately, remember a whole lot of the Drew Brees era at Purdue. I remember my dad went out to the Rose Bowl and I just remember thinking, oh, my dad's at the game, but I don't really, I couldn't tell you, you know, anything about the game itself. So, yeah, definitely jealous that you got to experience that because when we were in school, we uh, experienced the, the end of the Hope era and the beginning of the Hazel era. So that was, yeah, it's not good times. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, we had, uh, we had some great games in that, that, Breeze the senior year, the Rose Bowl year, the you know, the Ohio State game, the Michigan game were just insane. And every year we'd try to rush the field. And, you know, they have a line of cops come out near the end of the game and wouldn't let it happen. Uh, but those two games, they couldn't stop us, and they knew. Right. And, you know, it, you had a guy like Spider-Man, dressed as Spider-Man from Breakfast Club, on the goalpost, and they're trying to knock him down. Tim Stratton, the tight end at the time, had – he had come back for his senior year. He was going to be like a, I think a top three round draft pick mm -hmm. after his junior year and he decided to stay. And unfortunately he just didn't have the best year, uh, never panned out in the pros, but he was fan favorite. You'd show up early and he'd play catch with the people in the student section mm -hmm. um, before games. And he took his helmet off to celebrate with the fans. His helmet disappeared <laughs> and he wasn't like, he wasn't going to be able to play. You know, I think they would have found him a new helmet, yeah. um, but like all week it was a big deal. And he, uh, like, magically, I think, like, on Thursday or Friday night, his helmet shows up of course. Um, in the end zone next to the goalpost. Someone had returned <laughs> it because it's like, you know, what, what are you going to do? I think – I think uh, I can't remember what the next game – I don't know if the next game would have been the bucket game or not. Yeah. Uh, but it was – it was a great time. It, mm -hmm. it really was. Um, and, then, you know, the game no one talks about is when Nick Saban and Michigan State came – Burst. I think they're ranked fifth at the time, and we destroyed them. Destroyed them. It was so much fun. Um, so, you had the great games with the University Bookstore, Follett, where you win by so many touchdowns, you get like 50% off your shirts yep. on Mondays. Like it, it was a good time. And then kind of the end of the KD era was, was fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had that run in 2000, 2001. Yeah, 2000 to the, to the Elite Eight, yep. Yeah, I remember I was in my dorm at Kerry Quad, and 
could just hear a commotion after they beat Gonzaga, like in the middle, uh, in the center of the quad, like people were just out. So I went out there and all of a sudden we just take off and we just march around campus and the crowd got bigger and bigger. Hmm. Went to Purdue West, all those dorms, went that by all the fraternities, came back up out in front of Kerry Quad in the street and one of the apartments across the street there on Russell, uh, someone brought a couch out, lit it on fire. <laughs> Next thing you know, riot police are there. You're just kind of looking at them. Next thing you know, tear gas canisters are flying through the air. And I didn't get hit directly, but you just start running. And then yeah. you get back to your dorm, realize your dorm uh, without air conditioning had the window open. Right. Fan <laughs> blowing in. And it's just, you just got the secondhand tear gas, I guess. Uh, yeah. Always a fun memory. It's, it wasn't as yeah. fun at the time, but like you think about it, just how mm -hmm. crazy it was. Um, yeah, I miss college a lot. Yeah, that kind of that kind of nonsense where you're like, yeah, it's three in the morning. What are we doing? I don't know. Walk out in the hall and see who else is awake. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So. So you lived in uh, uh, a yeah. Cary Quad. You said it was that your the only dorm you lived in, or did you live in? Yeah, Southeast Quad, and then I rushed and uh, pledged and lived in Theta Tau, the engineering fraternity. Okay. Over on North Chauncey. Um, so it was. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, Jimmy John's guy. I worked at Jimmy John's for two and a half years, so it's on my bike. All the time love that still one of my favorite jobs nice. uh, just you know at four o'clock in the morning delivering food to drunk people who are leaving the cactus uh, nice. it's a lot of fun stories and you know, just good exercise too but yeah it's just kind of fun yeah. I made the what, most of my college experience sounds like it what was uh where was your favorite place to eat on campus <sighs> well I mean mad mushroom six mm -hmm. um they can't be topped like still um, and that was close uh, so that was an easy one. Um, but if like, we're going out and drinking, it was Jake's. Yep. Jake's pizza. Uh, you know, they'd always have great specials. I was a guy who lived there most summers. Mm -hmm. So you'd get the summer beer specials, like $3 pitchers of Coors Light, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, Jake's and Mad Mushroom Cheese Sticks were just 100%. Yeah, that's all it. the time. It, when Tanner and I would go out with our, with our buddies, our, uh, I was perfectly fine with starting out at Jake's being there for a few hours and then hitting up Harry's before it yeah. was over. And that was, I was a okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love Harry's too. It's just so damn hard to get in sometimes. Yeah. yeah there's nothing like a Baltimore zoo or a Colorado root beer. <laughs> Colorado root beer was my, just, was my drink of choice for sure. What's that? The zoo? No, uh, Colorado root beer was my. Oh, was Colorado my root beer is good. Yeah. They, green dragons are pretty good too. And like, yeah, that, that was always a great spot. Uh, you know, doesn't seem like there's too many bars anymore. Um, no, so yeah, Jake's is gone. So I know they've added some things, like, uh, but yeah, it's it's unfortunately I'm not sure how they can't keep a good bar scene with how many students are there. I'm not sure. They've not never sure wanted a good bar scene. They really never have. Mm -hmm. um, the city's always kind of been against it. Like, even when I was there, the boiler room, which is now Brothers, mm -hmm. for the longest time wanted a rooftop deck, and they just wouldn't let them. Like it was always this court battle, and it was always over parking spots. You yeah. know, but no one has cars on campus, right? So right. they eventually gave up the fight and sold the brothers. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. They've tried to push bars down to the levee, and there's some decent spots, but like Stacks was fun. Harry's is great. Jake's was great. Um, where else? I haven't been to the new where else, but <laughs> you can't beat Dollar Beer Night, Dollar Bottle, or Quarter Bottles on Mondays. Uh, is what it used to be. It's like ladies' night. That was always fun. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's disappointing because as an alum, you want to go back, you want to drink beer, and you want to watch a game or hang out and just be around college kids because it's kind of fun to watch them and look at them. And like they don't know what they're doing. Um, but now you got to go to Lafayette to get get a lot right. of good restaurants and bars. Yeah, um, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. One last question before we jump into kind of what you're doing now. Sure. What what was uh your favorite or best Breakfast Club costume or a group costume. Okay, so let's see. Um, my first Breakfast Club was Pete's Last. And that's Pete's when they were where the library is now, West okay. Lafayette yeah. Library. Yep. Like Pete's was one of the originals. And you go in and they just, you just buy a pitcher of a screwdriver and put a straw mm -hmm. in it. Yep. Like their last Breakfast Club was mine. It was Grand Prix because uh, I turned 21 in February of 80. Park in 2002 and I can remember just waiting in line um from like 5 a.m till 7 a.m just hanging out I worked at um 
Papa John's at the time. So like I got off work and brought cold pizzas and we just hung out in line, woke everyone up because I had work till uh, four o'clock in the morning or whenever we closed. And then I just come home, wake everyone in the, the fraternity up to go to breakfast up, just hang out in line. And we'd, we'd kind of clown on people walking home in their clothes from the night before. Um, there's usually a good line police where people tried to cut. Everyone would oh, scream yeah. out. It was a good time. And then you get in, you chug a pitch of screwdrivers, and you go home. Like, yep. the best part of like, being in line and just, like, hey, we did it. We made it. We were up till from, we we're in line from 5 till 7 a.m. And um, I don't remember. I think we had this closet of just random, old, like, plaid jackets and stuff. So we, I grabbed something out of there. But my favorite group costume there's an SNL skit with Will Ferrell and Tim Meadows. It's supposed to be like uh, Shining Time Junction or something like mm -hmm. that, where they had words on their chests and they all spelled like they'd spell out a word. And if you spelled it out, it said fuck face. Everyone had a, <laughs> had a shirt. So we had like 12 people. We had a conductor and we had a couple of extra people with blue shirts on. But we made these blue shirts with tape and everything for the letters. And it was kind of a random, a random skit because it didn't get as much love as it should have. But um, so we'd walk around and we'd spell stuff out. People, people got the idea. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, just coming up with those silly ideas. I never liked the people like went and got a Halloween costume. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, you're kind of mailing it in. It's like, yeah, you get a Care Bear snuggy uh, pajama onesie. Like that's fine. But like the people like. They plan it out. They maybe build it themselves or make it themselves or find something real old. That's always fun. Uh, I always gave them a little bit more props, but especially for the creativity, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, we want to like, you'll go, and I'm depending on. I'm sure there's, if they, I don't even know if they have Breakfast Club anymore, if it's the same, but like, it, you kind of see a lot of people with the same thing. But if you see something that stands out or something kind of oddball, you're like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Still makes me happy. So now you are co-owner of the shop here in Indianapolis. So yep. If you wouldn't mind, kind of walk us through, you know, how did you got started with them or, you know, how all that got started and kind of obviously the history of the, of the shop. So yeah, I guess it would start when I was at Purdue, I dated a girl who went to Madison, Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Madison. Madison yep. And um, I'd go up there a lot of weekends, you know, almost every weekend. I, Great I, campus. I, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I lived there one summer, too. Um, but so I'd go to football games, sit in the student section. Um, she'd give me a ticket and um, she lived across from Camp Randall in apartments but if you've been over there there's a lot of those three-story houses uh, where people would have the three-story beer bongs or um, fishing lines dropping beers out of windows and so we'd hang there so it's a totally different scene they didn't really have a tailgate scene to be house parties before where you roll up there's a keg give them five bucks to give you a cup and um, we're sitting on the porch one day and this guy shows up with a duffel bag of t-shirts. It was a red t-shirt and it had Bucky, but they had, they had uh, redesigned Bucky. So he's flipping the bird from <laughs> Bucky. I still have the shirt and like, he's just rolling around. And I thought to myself, like, that's a pretty good gig. Like, you know, I think they're 10 or 15 bucks. I don't think I paid for mine. I think he got distracted and we walked away, um, which, eh, whatever. Yeah. Right. Like you fast forward to, I graduated in 05. Uh, fall of 06, I get, I'm running a construction job in Monticello, you know, mm -hmm. north of Purdue, uh, right behind Indiana Beach. We're rebuilding a bridge, um, and they, I'm living out of town. And they put me in a, an apartment behind Target there in Lafayette, which is also across the street from Chances Are, um, if, if you're old enough to remember that. Um, and I just started dating a girl who is now my wife. And so I'm sitting there. I've got tons of friends back in my fraternity still. Uh, all the bar specials, I got a per diem, and I need something to do to occupy my time because I couldn't go out to Brothers or Jake's every single night and then go to work the next day. So I took up, I decided to teach myself screen print. I was like, you know what? I remember that guy selling stuff. I'm going to do this and try to sell T-shirts at tailgates. So I came up with the idea of instead of Purdue, a shirt said per drunk. Like it just says per drunk. I'll try to sell them 10 bucks a shirt, put them in my house on the weekends, and then go up to tailgates and stuff like that. And that's kind of how I got started. Uh, I'd print for my fraternity, things like that. And it was just really a hobby, um, something to screw around with. I do on the weekends when I come home. And it slowly morphed into 
you know, it wasn't just friends and family, it was businesses. Um, and I started doing like live events where I'd, I'd sell original shirts. And I met up these two guys, um, a company called Hayes and Taylor, and that's Joe Schneiders and Brian Kelly. Uh, they're my business partners. Uh, I started printing their stuff. They printed their own stuff too. I hated it. I hated printing. I like the printing aspect. That's kind of why, like, I'm hands on. That's why I was looking at engineering and, and construction management. Um, and so I started printing their stuff. And I got busier and busier. And then in 2013, we had just 2012, just ready to have our first kid. I actually came to the city of Indianapolis to work on the Rebuild Indy project. Um, that's around the time the Super Bowl was happening. Uh, so there's a lot going on, but I was home every day now for the first time in like ever. I was home every night. I'd come home and I just have stuff to do. So I'm printing more, I'm printing more, I'm printing more. And like 2014, I decided I've got to quit my job, uh, either screen printing or I've got to quit my job at the city because it's just gotten too busy. Um, business is going too well. I started from scratch. Um, I mean, as grassroots as you can get. No mm -hmm. initial investment, nothing, no idea what I was doing. I'd make my own equipment. Uh, it was trial and error. I'm working in my garage till two, three in the morning almost every night. So it's like, well, I got to try, I got to let this ride and see what happens. I can always go back to the city or to a construction company. Those jobs are always available. Um, so I told my boss, you know, 2015, it's, I'm going out on my own. And I think like March of 2015, uh, Brian from Hazel Taylor was like, hey, do you want to like get a space to share? Like he was thinking about a retail space. And I was thinking that could work and my garage is getting too small. So maybe we'll just get this space together. And that's our Broad Ripple store. Okay. And um, we had a store, we opened a store May 15th and did everything on our own too. There was no, we didn't have money to hire contractors. We went in and demoed it, painted, built all the racks. And, open March 15th, we're only open weekends. And it was like, I think we had like 12 shirts in the store. <laughs> uh, we had, you know, he had some licensing IU and Butler, uh, Purdue at the time was very stingy mm -hmm. giving out licenses. Um, that was our biggest, not complaint, the biggest request. When are you gonna have Purdue stuff? Like, you know, we're trying. Um, they just, they weren't really receptive to handing out licenses at the mm -hmm. time. And so we kept growing and growing. Um, after two years, it was kind of like, well, you know, we're kind of doing the same thing sometimes. What if we just merged our businesses together? Um, you know, that gives you the print shop. That gives me, I don't have to worry about trying to come up with designs all the time for myself. Um, you know, we just kind of join forces and do our thing because, you know, while we we're open weekends, I didn't move my stuff out of my garage to like July 4th weekend in 2015. Okay. And so that weekend I moved everything in there and that following Monday I was printing while the store was open and Brian who was working at Salesforce at the time he liked it, it, he would work from home quite often and re in reality he'd get his work done he'd come and hang out with me in the store and after a couple of weeks it's like I think I'm just going to quit my day job and I'm like all right man that's on you you know um, that, that's your life I'm not going to force you into it. It's great to have company. Uh, I was very excited about it. I didn't want to like push him in that direction because yeah, I knew what the stress was like to, to kind of like leave something that was comfortable and to go off on your own and not knowing what's going to happen. Um, and so he quit his day job too. And we just kind of, you know, work together every day to build the store and build the brand. Um, and it was when Mitch Daniels got hired, we thought, hey, maybe he'll give out licenses. Like maybe they'll be a little more receptive to letting other companies, smaller companies, do produce stuff. And it, that is the case. I mean, that I, I, I don't know if he's directly responsible, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, that's when we got our Purdue license. Uh, things really took off from there because you know, there's a lot of Purdue grads in the state, in the city, uh, and nationwide. Um, so, you know, 2017, we merge and, you know, we keep going. Um, Broad Ripple, it's not the same store now. It's actually moved next door. Um, our our five-year lease was up. Same, it's our, actually our, our landlord is the guy, the family of the owns brothers, oddly enough. But uh, the space next door has really got more, more um, floor space for us. And we opened one in Carmel uh, in 2017. 
in Clay Terrace. And now we're, you know, where we started in our garage and then started printing in the store. Now we've got uh, our offices and warehouse production space. We actually just acquired, not acquired, but started leasing the space next door because we ran out of space there. So uh, we're getting ready to hire someone again too. Like it's grown by leaps and bounds. Um, and a lot of it in the last 18 months, uh, which is not something I, I would have been confident in uh, in March of last year. Right. Uh, but, you know, people being home, uh, it doesn't hurt that the government was just writing checks for everyone. Um, and, you know, it also, I, I don't, you know, certain, certain markets or certain, uh, certain economies were not hurt as bad as others, you know, restaurant workers, bar workers obviously took a big hit, but, you know, people can work from home. It, financially, it probably didn't change their life very much. So we saw our online sales skyrocket. Uh, now that, you know, we're kind of back open, um, I think, and nothing's back to normal, but our in-store retail sales have grown quite a bit as well over the last few years. So we are one of those stories where it, the, the pandemic was really good for us. Um, I don't want to say that bragging because no. you know, it wasn't good for people, but we are very, very fortunate. Um, you know, we didn't have to lay off anybody full time. We, we worked all the way through. That's awesome. Uh, and, you know, we've continued to grow and it's, we've been able to put ourselves in a good position going forward. Um, and, you know, get to seat, a seat at the table with, a, you know, big companies, mm -hmm. uh, big companies that uh, are a lot bigger than us. Uh, you know, we feel like we're maybe not comparable in size with the product we put out. Uh, it, we're up there with, and I think, it's, I think us being smaller, I think we care a little more. I think we try a little harder, right. uh, especially with the local universities. Absolutely. You know, Purdue... Purdue doesn't get as much love as an Ohio State or a Michigan um, for them, their respective vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a Purdue shirt, to me, being a grad, like, I want us to have the best Purdue stuff. That, hands down. I don't want to mail it in. But we don't right. want to do that with anything we do. Um, and I think fans see that. Because it's really easy to be a fan of the Yankees, right, and to find Yankees here. Right. Or uh, Ohio State. Brian's mm -hmm. a big Ohio State fan. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to find their stuff, but like when I was at school, the Purdue select merch was terrible. The best stuff was at Stephen Barry's, and Purdue kicked that, took their license because they were probably outselling. Uh, it's just finding cool, comfortable clothes with marks and different vintage, uh, you know, vintage Pete's or vintage trains on it, mm -hmm. uh, oil maker specials on it. Is it was near impossible, uh, but now you know they're Purdue's great to work with because they. You know, let us do whatever we want, but they're very receptive to different ideas. And it's, I can't say that for every, every school or every uh, licensor we work with when we try to pitch them like, hey, you know, like people from the 80s spend money, but they don't want a Purdue shirt that looks like it's from this year. They want something from when they were in school. Right. So the Pete they had or, you know, the colors they had, you know, I don't like Vegas gold. I'll be honest with you. I, and if it's not metallic, it doesn't look very great. Uh, some of the stuff, it looks like like a yellow khaki. And like, I just don't want it. But like an old gold or, you know, something like that. I love how that looks. So like to just say, this is our brand now and this is what we want to do. And this is how our merch is into. It's not the best way to go about it. And, you know, thankfully Purdue's been very, very open, you know, and forward thinking in that regard. Awesome. And this, I, I, I can speak personally as i've been a fan of, of the shop for a few years now and these shirts are thank you pretty damn comfortable i'm wearing right now the eric hunter oh NIL, yeah, yeah, yeah which is I mean, my next been... kind of leading into my next question which is obviously july 1st rolled around and nil for student athletes in college was a big shift in college athletics as a whole kind of a lot of you know not really sure what was going on so what was the shop's approach to i guess wading into these kind of very interesting watch. We've seen a lot of athletes since July 1st kind of come out with these just wild. And I mean, some of them are super fun and funny, you know, sponsorships or whatever it is, but obviously being able to profit off their name, image, and likeness. So what was uh, your guys' kind of approach to that or the idea behind all of that? So, I mean, we were, we're driving home 
June 30th. Mm -hmm. And you know, the announcement was made that basically the NCAA said, ah, we don't know how to, we don't have an answer. So it's all, you know, do what you want. We're right. not going to deal with it. Like they basically said, yeah, we wash our hands, which yeah. is typical NCAA. Oh, like, of course. They were unprepared. I think they thought you know, someone was bluffing or, you know, that they were going to get their way. And, you know, it, it, college football, college sports is not what it was 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, they should have seen this coming and been able to, you know, somewhat either control it or um, run it through how they do business or, you know, fit into their model. But they didn't. So they just kind of said, hey, you know, you guys do what you will. And I think they kind of left the, the onus on the colleges. And um, it, it was good for us. It was very good for us. Um, but, you know, I'm driving home and Brian texts me. He's like, you see this? I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. Um, and what are we going to do? I was like, well, we, I think we need to reach out to universities, see what their thoughts are, see what their plans are. And it's like, yeah. And, you know, Brian, and Brian's very, Brian's very aggressive uh, on things like this. So he, you know, he just put out a post says, Hey, any college athletes want to work with us? Uh, let's go. And, you know, with social media, it's easy to get a hold of these guys. Oh yeah. Like if you want to go, like back in the day, you probably have to go through the university, mm -hmm. and it be, um, it, it takes some time. So we just hit these guys up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Be receptive, and you know, we'd ask them like, "Hey, you know, we want to work together. Uh, I'm sure you don't know what's going on any more than we do." Um, and, and that was the case, and like, we don't want to get you in trouble with the school. So, you know, and talking to, like, guys we talked to early on, like Sasha Stefanovic mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, talked to George Carl Loftus. They're all kind of like, well, you know, we got a meeting next week with our compliance office and, um, you know, I'll know more. It's like, well, that's great. Let's, you know, we pretty much told them we want to do a shirt. We don't, you know, we're not looking for exclusivity. Um, well, it's fairly simple on our end or on their end. We just see what they like, come up with a design. They're good with it. Uh, we sell it, and then we cut them a check every month uh, for a portion of sales. There's no – it's straight-up licensing. There's no inventory risk on their end. Uh, we ask that they help us market it to their social media following. Absolutely. Uh, but, but there's no, like, oh, if they don't sell, then you have to buy these back or anything like mm -hmm. that. Like, we want to experience for them because um, they – I mean, they're the first generation to be able to just capitalize on um, – on their likeness, which I think is great. Uh, 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't have had this opinion, but looking at it now, like, why not? Like, some of right. these guys, um, you know, like Bobby Buckets, Bobby Rydell, right? Oh. He's, he's not going to make a living. He wasn't going to make a living playing basketball, but there's a moment, there's a year, like, he's that guy that everyone wants to come in. He's the fan favorite. Yep. And yeah. why shouldn't he be able to make a little bit of money off of that, that, that likeness, which the window is so small. Right. Um, or or guys like Chris Kramer, who's mm -hmm. having a good career. I think he's still playing yep. overseas. Yeah, he's but, signing a new contract, yeah. You know, fan favorite, um, you know, would have sold a ton of shirts while he was oh, in yeah. college. Um, would have sold a ton to opposing fan bases that would have burned them. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, but why why are they any different? I know they're getting scholarships and I you know and, and I know they're they probably have to follow some rules and there's a, a competitive advantage maybe for some schools, but I don't think it's that great that you know people are gonna go to one school over the other that based on you know, can they get a t-shirt deal, a sponsorship with a car dealership? You know, they still a lot of these guys are still gonna go where they can get seen and play at the next level. But it's really cool to talk to these guys. Um, I mean, you could teach a course in this, in licensing and, and brand management. And if you've got a, a, a young kid coming from high school who very well could play at the next level, and a college is supposed to be a place where you learn how to live your life and how to provide yourself and, and build a career. And if you're just – you're good at basketball and that's, that's your talent, why shouldn't the college be able to teach you how to go out and do these things off the car, court, like negotiate a contract, Mm -hmm. uh, look into a, a deal that, you know, maybe it's apparel, maybe it's, it's an endorsement deal. Like I, it's like a lab in engineering or chemistry where like it's real life experience. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys couldn't do that before. And it's, it was kind of silly. 
And like uh, Sasha Stefanovic, he was now able to run a camp in his hometown and use his likeness to run a basketball camp for kids. Couldn't do that before, but now right, he can. Which is, uh, you know, maybe he makes some money. Line. I don't yeah. know if he makes yeah. money off of it. Maybe he just wants to do it. Maybe he wants to get into coaching one day. Right. That's something he can do. So I think it's pretty great. Uh, we've gotten a lot of great response from it. Um, you know, it was kind of tough at first mm -hmm. to get people because um, I'm sure – I can't imagine – what the phones were like of like D1 college athletes on, on June 30th, right. right? Like just blowing up from different, different people. Like, who do you trust? Um, you know, we're, we're pretty forthright with them and, and mm -hmm. honest. I think, you know, while we're not doing license, co-license Purdue and, and athlete stuff, because I, it, they get more money just going non, uh, non-licensed um, from the college angle. Because um, if they go through the university, it's a set, it's a set uh, percentage. Right. Right? They're getting more money from us just doing like an a unbranded type shirt, like what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty cool to see. Uh, we've sent out some decent sized checks too. Um, yeah. you know, July was the first month and continues to grow. So, what, uh, uh, so you, guys, you guys are up to what, 14 athletes now that you guys have on? Well, I think I just checked your website before this. I, think you guys I don't know. I mean, we released a, an IU football player today. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of losing track. Yeah. Like, I'm more on the production end. Right. Uh, we're so busy in the back printing shirts. I was back there printing with the crew today. Um, so I don't even know. Yeah, like yeah. We're, we're up there, and it, it seems to be – more, more and more every every week. Uh, and I think words kind of gotten out too because mm -hmm. uh, we get contacted from pe random people, uh, which unfortunately we can't say yes to everyone. Right. So it's got to make sense. Um, mm -hmm. You've got some kind of social media presence to market, mm -hmm. which is very easy, um, you know, as an athlete. Um, so it's, it's, it's going well. And we haven't even, I mean, school's just starting now. So once... Once games start and then college basketball season starts, it's – yeah, I think we're going to be very busy with college athlete shirts. So moving forward, what's – uh, as we kind of – I want wrap up. I know you got family home, so I want to let no, you go. you're fine. Um, so obviously the NIL is a big thing now. So just, I guess in the shop in general, what is your – goal moving forward you guys i know i tanner my co-host asked if you guys plan on doing any sort of like because you obviously have not just college athletes you have you know current nfl players you have you know i mean you got like a larry bird shirt you got some licenses yeah. with them do you guys plan on doing like any like uh, like a legends uh type of you know line if that's i know it's probably a little bit harder to get some of those guys to come on board but you know i mean we're i like the fact that we're not a college brand Right. Or, you know, we're, you know, we're based in Indianapolis. Most of our stuff has a, an Indiana theme to it. Yep. That's an Indiana cool, tie. Yeah. Yep. That's just, I mean, that's just how we've grown. Um, some of our most popular stuffs, Indy 500, IMS. Yep. Um, stuff with Indy 11, right? Indy, Indy 11, 11, we run their merchandise. Uh, you know, we've got IU, Butler, Purdue, Indiana State licenses. Um, do some pop culture. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of like to just do what makes us happy. We're not... Yeah. We don't want to just kind of, this is what we do. Especially we found, you know, all stuff didn't sell too great when everyone was sitting at home mm -hmm. in 2020. Uh, so we'd work on a lot of like kind of vintage nostalgia. A lot of it, a lot of it local. Um, but, you know, we're slowly adding more. We'll probably start doing some out of state, maybe some colleges and things. But, um, you know, it, it, it'd be nice to get a few more licenses. We're going to launch a few new small schools this year. Uh, but the goal is just to keep growing. Uh, it'd be great to be more popular on campuses. Yep. Um, you know, we don't want to be your dad's favorite brand. Uh, we want college students to know who we are, too. And I'm, I'm 40 now. Brian's in his late 30s. Joe's in his late 30s. Uh, so, you know, all our friends and all the people we know, um, they like our stuff. But we want the young kids coming up, too. So it'd be nice. We're trying to get a presence on campuses. Um, the goal is just to make great shirts that people want to buy. Um, you know, if it's college, if it's pro, if it's a former athlete, yeah, it is kind of tough to get. We try to get all the guys, retired athletes, um, and it's tough to do. Uh, we, I mean, we get taken seriously, but there's still, you know, NFLPA stuff like that, where like you just got to hound them and hound them and hound them, um, and, and until they finally just say, "All right, we'll give you a shot." 
Um, and it's, it's a lot of email, a lot of phone calling, being on hold. Um, and honestly, a lot of our, our stuff happened by chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not, I mean, not necessarily by chance, but, you know, we're, we're poised to take on any opportunity. You know, if, if there's an opportunity, we're going to seize it. Uh, we pivot pretty well. It's like this NIL stuff. We're like, hey, let's get it out. Let's get it to market. Uh, let's establish a name for ourselves. We've looked at other brands in other states. They haven't done a ton. I don't know if they plan to, if they want to, but I think it's a fun thing to do. It's cool to work with these kids. Um, Cause they're, I mean, they are just kids. Like I had a zoom call with George Karloftis. I, unfortunately that deal didn't work out, but like just talking to him, it's like, yeah, I watch you on Saturdays and I cheer for you. And they're like, you're like this giant. Cause you've got this, you know, you've got a suit of armor on you wearing a Purdue uniform. You're ripping off quarterback's heads. But like, you're just a kid. You're like 21, 22 years old, figuring out your life. They're all like really down to earth. Uh, it's refreshing to see. Um, and yeah, it's kind of neat. It's, uh, it, it really is. Um, we haven't run into anyone weird yet, thankfully. Um, we've got a, we've got a few parents who have contacted us. Yeah. Reach yeah. The, the little league parents. Uh, oh, yeah. But, uh, uh, fortunately, I don't handle too much of that. <laughs> Stay off social media. It's not... Social media is not made for my sense of humor in this day and age. <laughs> well, the uh, your guys' social media is awesome. So I encourage everybody to give them a follow. I, say I love the videos yeah, you guys post. Yeah. You guys we, we, posting. we post a lot. Um, Jordan handles most of that. She's great. Yeah, she is. Um, doing a lot of the, the – not I get called TikTok, over, yeah. I call them yeah. vines. <laughs> uh, TikTok, you know, yeah. reels and stuff like that because that's what – that's what the kids are into, right? Absolutely. Um, it's interesting. It's it's kind of captivating. Yeah. Uh, she does a great job with that. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to think. Me- yeah, we don't have – our goal is just to do more. Just yeah. get bigger. Keep growing. Um, find new find new um, markets to tap into. And, um, you know, like this. Like, we're not, we're not a Purdue brand. I've been told right. many, many times. So we have to give a fair shake to all other universities, um, even the ones that can't beat us in basketball anymore. Right. But, yeah, I mean, that is- um, you know, <clears throat> like I said, if it's up to me, and, you know, I want to make sure we have great Purdue stuff. I don't yeah. want to see anything. I still love to go to a game, go to, you know, I go to my, I coach my kids soccer games on Saturdays, and I count how many of our shirts we see. Like, it's still fun. It's like, ah, oh, there's one, there's one. I watch the races or I watch games on TV, pick them out in the crowd. Like, it's still like a little kid. It's right. many, many thousands of shirts that we've sold. Um, it's still fun. Um, I love going to work every day. We got a great crew. Um, it's fun. It's fulfilling. Like, I never thought I'd be in this position or doing this. Uh, I thought I'd be building, like, million-dollar homes. Right now, that's what I was thinking of in college, and I just kind of fell into this. Like it's, it's great. It's yeah. great. Terrifying, um, but it's great. Yeah. And for those who don't know, you guys also do not just clothing. You guys do drinkware, and I've got a couple awesome glasses yeah. that hold a nice, yeah. nice twelve ounce beer. That yeah, we, drink, uh, drink on the pod. we outsourced the drinkware, but we just bought a laser engraver for like Yeti tumbler type style thing. Oh, nice. Uh, they make these great. Uh, we're getting ready. We'll, our, our, a lot of our college stuff, college football stuff launches next week. Okay. Uh, Purdue is Wednesday. So what's that? The 31st, I believe. Um, uh, first, September 1st, I think. Oh, September 1st. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Okay. So yeah. September 1st, Purdue stuff comes out. Um, so it's all college football stuff next week. And we'll even have more college stuff coming out. But yeah, the uh, insulated uh, koozies, or not koozies, bever- beer can mm-hmm. holders, fantastic. Um, great for tailgating. Yep. So no, I the bought laser my engravers made that easy. Yeah, no, I bought my dad a uh, a Purdue tumbler for Christmas, and he's a he's a big fan. He had it on the has takes it on the lake. This yeah, he's, he's no, they're fan. great. Uh, that and they like we do hats. Uh, yep. Hats are fun. Magnets. Um, magnets, stickers. We bought a sticker machine because we couldn't. We just kept buying stickers from mm-hmm. like Sticker Mule, and it's like, well, let's buy our own. That thing runs nonstop. Mm-hmm. People love stickers. Yep. We do so much. Like old designs we don't put on shirts anymore. We'll throw them on stickers. Right. We put them on laptops, put them on their tumblers. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, we try to do as much as possible in house. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, so we can control the production, mm-hmm. control the schedule. And two, it's, it's cheaper. And, you know, we just, it's kind of more fun that way. 
Mm-hmm. I like the process. That's that's me. That's the boilermaker in me. Absolutely. Like the process of it. But are you able to get back to to campus for game? Obviously not last year, but how, are you able no, to get back? we're going to this year. Now my kid, I got four boys, ages yep. three to nine. Okay. So there's a time where we'd always have a baby, so we'd go up and tailgate, mm-hmm. home or like go out and walk around campus, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this year the goal is to go to some game, more games, mm-hmm. tailgate. Uh, I miss it. It's a lot of fun. You know, I, I, I'm still in touch with a lot of my fraternity brothers nice. you know, from college. So put together a tailgate, and um, there's a lot of us down in the Indy area. So definitely got to make it up some games this year mm-hmm. uh, with a full house, and mm-hmm. a new video board. I saw it the other day. Is, I don't know how I feel about it, but <laughs> pretty wild. I, I keep forgetting about that. Can I say it? I it's weird to not see the brick and yellow and white Ross yeah. HD. Yeah, kind of sitting there, but the, the video board itself is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's that whole stadium, what they've done with, with the lights. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that's that's Mitch Daniels and Babinski. Yeah. Way. No more but, twelve o'clock games. Exactly. That's, yeah. Hated that's the twelve o'clock September games. You only got three hours of tailgate. It was it's hot. Uh, it's too hot. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, as we kind of kind of round third head home here, so and we appreciate your time. So, no problem. Um, what are your uh, your thoughts going into the 2021 Boilermaker football season? Well, I mean, who's our quarterback? Do we know yet? Not yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's our – we have like 17 defensive coordinators, it seems like. Um, I mean, I, 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 I we'll know, I think, probably before the first week. I mean, who knows? It's kind of one of those like kind of – under center watch on, yeah, on game day. I, mean, I, I personally, uh, I'm a Jack. I like, I like both Plummer and O'Connell. I personally think Plummer should be the guy, just my opinion, just because I know, you know, I like O'Connell a lot. He's got a great arm. He's got a better arm than Plummer, but where Plummer is a little bit better with his feet so he can yeah. move and our offensive line is not the best or in very thin. So I think, I feel like right now our offense is geared to, you have to be a little bit more mobile, so that's kind of why I'm, I'm leaning towards the plumber route, but I, I mean, I'm happy with either guy. I and mean, I think the fact that O'Connell beat him out last year might say something, but it, I mean, just from reading notes from, from camp, it sounds like plumber. I mean, they all kind of split, but it sounds like plumber might've had the upper edge a little upper hand a little bit, but I guess yeah. we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know what to think going into this season. I know it's <laughs> our last year with David Bell. Um, yep. yeah. He's going to go pro. Yep. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. We, we just had so many problems, so much, so much bad luck with injuries. Mm-hmm. You know, everything seemed great, what, four years ago? With Brunt, was it three, four years? I can't remember. Three, what, yeah, 2018 was ago, Ohio like, State when we beat Ohio State. And, yep, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's tough. You're like, all right, all right, what's the excuse now? What's, you know, okay, what happened now? It's not that I think something bad's going to happen, but it's like, I mean, it's kind of like, Shit, or get up hot. We got to right. figure something out because mm-hmm. I mean, we're we're investing a lot of money in facilities. Mm-hmm. Um, the, you know, we've had recruiting cycles. But we got to do something. I mean, we right. got to make a bowl game. It, uh, it's great to win the bucket, but that's not good enough. I, I think right. the standard is you've got to go to a bowl game. You got to win. Mm-hmm. Um, can we do it? I don't know. Yeah. I, I do not know. Um, it, it certainly. I, I guess Jeff Rom's on a hot seat. I don't think a bad year he'd, he'd lose his job. But no, yeah. I mean, what are we doing? Like we've got we've got talent at different positions. We've mm-hmm. had time to recruit. Uh, you know the defensive coordinator. Who knows? Um, I hope this guy gets it right. Yep. Because we can't we can't we can't have another Diaco fiasco, um, which was unbelievable. Um, so. Yeah, I do not know what to expect going into the season. I'm excited for the season. I'm excited yeah. for the Notre Dame game to be back. Mm-hmm. Uh, starting off at night is going to be great. Um, yeah, we uh, as a the three of us, uh, Tanner and Andrew and I, we kind we've kind of come to the conclusion which we'll, we'll talk about on a on a later pod. But we think the Oregon State first game is probably the biggest game of the Brom era because you he's got to start out. You got to start strong. Yeah, you I mean, know. We're, we're favored. They're a pretty similar team. We're favored right now by a touchdown, like seven and a half. Um, but you know, you know, take that right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about Oregon State. Yeah, but I, you know, like I have no idea. Um, the defensive coordinator is Tim Tibisar, who was a former Purdue uh, coordinator. So hopefully we can put up about sixty on him. But okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
it it's a lot like being a Colts fan the last few few years. Pagano air. It's like, oh, here we go again. It's yeah. like, I, I, I mean, what are we doing? Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, my fingers are crossed. It, it'd be great because I mean, that stadium is a lot of fun when it's mm-hmm. packed and rocking. Uh, West Lafayette's a lot more fun on Saturdays when people mm-hmm. are out tailgating. Everyone's wearing their colors. Um, you know, it's – they got to do something. They got to do something. <laughs> right. They got to get to a bowl game. Yeah. Like the opportunity to win the West, it's there. It's kind of been there. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, I'd love to, I'd love to rip off um, PJ Flex tie, shove him in a boat, and row his ass down the river. I'm getting, I'm getting sick of some of these other people, but like, we're kind of like a doormat or a punching bag right now. And it, right. It, it's, it sucks to see. Um, and kind of where we were, and then we like, you know, expectations were all time high uh, mm-hmm. after that Ohio, that Ohio State game, and even that year, uh, we looked so good. Uh, it looked like the future was very bright. I just haven't been able to put it together. So, right. hopefully, a few people step up. Um, we can stay healthy, and you know, make make game days fun again. Absolutely. And then yeah, I say you know, basketball still a few months away, but that's that's going to be basketball. We're getting a lot of hype. A yeah. lot of hype. Um, they asked me, like, how much time is Caleb first going to get? Uh, you know, <laughs> Jay Nivey is probably gone too after this year. Yeah. I mean, the uh, sky's kind of the limit for them there. Right. So, you know, looking forward to that. Uh, we got a lot of experience and um, a lot of talent. So, Mackie will be rocking for sure. Absolutely. Yes, it's... Uh, and, you know, it's going to be, I don't know, do we get IU twice this year? Oh, uh, we should. Yeah, it's one of the protected rivalries that they haven't okay. announced. They haven't announced the Big Ten schedule yet. Um, or really, yeah, yeah, they haven't announced the schedule yet. It's probably, hopefully, coming soon. I know it's still a ways away, but yeah, we'll we'll get. We should get them twice. Yeah, that the um, season. Yeah, that should be that should be a lot of fun. Another great another great uh season. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to get back to Elite Eight again mm-hmm. and uh, beyond. Yeah, yeah. Have a good, you know, a full game. Not yeah. that last five seconds, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. Um, yeah. And hopefully fans are too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like. Are they requiring vaccinations? And, and I haven't that? seen anything. No, I mean, I know the university's not, so I, I don't think they're doing anything like that with the stadium um, that I've seen. Um, yeah, so I'm sure if they were going to, they would obviously check out yeah. the Purdue social on that, but as of right now, you have full capacity. Uh, cool. I don't believe, and if, I don't believe any requirements in terms of facial covering. So definitely, yeah, you know, September, what, September fourth at what is the time? Uh, it's third fourth at seven o'clock game against Oregon State. It's going to be hopefully a packed house. It's going to be rocking. It's a first time in Ross Aid uh, for me and probably a lot of other Purdue fans since the Bucket game yeah. in 2019 I mean, when it was terrible weather and. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. So you figure all these incoming freshmen who kind of had their senior year in high school taken away. Right. Uh, you know, they're just itching for that college experience because that mm-hmm. is a huge part of it. You know, going to class and being up at mm-hmm. two in the morning and uh, kids still play Dave Matthews band on guitars in their, in their dorm rooms nonstop. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, I was, I can remember just that, first Notre Dame-Purdue game my freshman year uh, when Breeze turned into a helicopter on a goal line. I think – I think – my dad can't confirm, but I'm pretty sure that was my first Purdue football game. Yeah, that that was just that morning. Like, this is my first football game as a college yeah. student. You know, it, it was just that fit, – like that feeling, oh, we're going to mm-hmm. go. We're going to get up and get stuff on. We're going to tailgate. You know, go with – like I'm sitting with this group of people. We're going to – we're going to – be loud. We're going to wear this. Like, it's so much fun. Uh, mm-hmm. The anticipation now for, you know, the, what the freshman last year didn't get it, right? Yeah. So, right, yeah. I mean, they're they're sitting here like they don't know either. So you're going to have all these people who are just so hungry. And I'm sure mm-hmm. there's a lot of people missed out on their senior year coming mm-hmm. back. So it should be crowded. It should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, it, yeah. I'm anxiously awaiting, yeah, 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock on September 4th. Just to see what happens. The keys shaking, kickoff, um, you know, the big drum. 
you know, just all the sights and sounds, the marching band coming out. Yeah, that's it, that's what I miss a lot is just hearing the band. That you know, atmosphere. Are they, are yeah. they still doing the I Am an American oh, yeah. uh, poem at oh, the yeah. beginning? Or yeah. is that offensive now? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for my if I remember correctly, 2019, they still did it. So Okay. You know, it's I like what they've done. Um, student section is a lot better than it was my, my, my freshman and sophomore year. Uh, there's a lot of people dressed in green discount den Purdue shirts or breakfast club costumes. And they're like, right. slowly, you know, the Curtis Painter years, they got more unified and everyone's yep. all wearing black. And it, it looked like a student section you'd see in Madison. Yep. Uh, you know, the one, two, three, four, first down, chance, great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like shout. I know it's kind of like still a Wisconsin thing, but, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's still fun. It galvanizes the, the students. You bring back a, a boiler oh, alarm. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so they've done a really good job to make it fun, uh, make it a good experience, you know. So it's it's I'm I'm excited now because I can go share it with my kids. I think yeah, I think uh, my oldest has been to a game. Maybe my oldest two have been to a game, but they were too young to really get mm -hmm. it. So now, like we can go and tailgate and have a lot of fun and throw the football, march to the stadium, um, pay too much for peanuts and popcorn and, <laughs> hot dogs and stuff like that. And, oh yeah, you'll know, have a good time. Absolutely. Well, Alex, we really appreciate you hopping on hey, with us you. for for the uh, for this little interview here and. Um, just want to let our listeners know that actually, like I said, because of the shop being a sponsor, they've actually been generous enough to give our listeners a promo code. Uh, so if, if our listeners go to the shopindie.com and enter code breakdown, you get 25% off, not 10, not 15, not 20, like these other companies, they're being generous and giving you guys 25% off for anything that you order online. Again, that's code breakdown at the shopindie.com. Um, yeah, Alex, thank you so much. Like I said, I've, hey, I've, been, I've been a fan of, of the store for a long time. So the, the, when this opportunity presented itself, I was I jumped mm -hmm. on it just as a fan of your clothing. And you guys make some damn good shirts and, and items. I mean, we're and, fans and we make shirts for fans. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Like, you know, the passion and, and the, the the tradition that, come, mm -hmm. that comes with being a fan of anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what we try to harness, you know, capture and put in a shirt. I know it's, it's hard sometimes. Right. But, you know, that, that we're trying to trigger nostalgia, trigger memories mm -hmm. when, when you see one of the designs and like, you know, going to do more, uh, try to ex kind of expand our stuff now that as, as we're getting bigger, it's easier mm -hmm. to sell different ideas. Uh, so, yeah, expect to see a lot of new fun stuff. Um, yep, September 1st, Purdue stuff uh, we will launch online. It'll be in stores before the weekend. Mm -hmm. So if you need something uh, before the game, come on out to one of our stores Friday. Um, or you can use your promo code, but yeah, we're, we're excited. We're excited for sports to be back. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Alex. And, uh, hey, thank hope, you. To see, hope to see you at a game and boiler up. Yeah. Maybe next time I'll talk about the time I streaked Elliot Hall and music. Oh, that's a story we got here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe next time, man. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. This is fun. Yeah, thank you.